Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Geography with Joy. This is Suva Lakshmi back again with one more interesting topic on geography. Today we'll discuss about the seasons. Please subscribe my channel and like and share my video. Don't forget to put a comment to share your feeling. It will help me to serve you better. Let's start the class now. In my previous class, I had discussed about the summer season and the season of southwest monsoon. In this class, we will concentrate on the season of retreating southwest monsoon and the cold season or the season of northeast monsoon. The retreating southwest monsoon. By 1st September, with the apparent movement of the sun towards south, the low pressure in central India starts weakening and is no longer able to attract the monsoon winds towards land. During autumn equinox, when the sun shines directly over equator, the high pressure begins to build over mainland and subsequently with low pressure over the sea, the southwest monsoon begins to withdraw from the mainland of India. The southwest monsoon starts retreating from northern India in early October. Hence, the months of October and November are known for the retreating monsoon. It is a transition period between the hot rainy season and the cold dry season. The monsoon trough of low pressure over the Ganga plains becomes weaker due to the apparent southward movement of the sun. The low pressure trough is gradually replaced by high pressure. The low pressure conditions are transferred to the center of Bay of Bengal by early November. This shift of the low pressure area is marked by cyclonic depressions which originate over the Bay of Bengal. Some of the cyclonic depressions manage to cross the eastern coast of the southern peninsula resulting in heavy and widespread rains on the coast of Tamil Nadu and parts of Orissa. These cyclonic storms move from the northeast to the southwest. The retreating monsoons are generally dry except on the coastal areas of Tamil Nadu, Orisha and parts of Karnataka. The bulk of the rainfall of the Kodamandal coast is derived from depressions and cyclones. I have already told that this shift of low pressure area is marked by cyclonic depressions which originate over the Bay of Bengal. The withdrawal of the southwest monsoon is a much slower process than its onset. It is just a reversal of the process. As the southwest monsoon had traveled towards the north, now it retreats towards the south. This process starts in October and is over by the end of November. By the end of September, the southwest monsoon withdraws from Punjab and Uttar Pradesh, by October from central India and finally by the end of November from South India. The retreating monsoon causes rain in coastal region on the eastern coast, the south of Krishna Delta and in the interior districts. Have a look at the picture here. This is the destruction made by the cyclonic wind. When they occur, they cause tremendous loss of life and property due to heavy rains, usually on the eastern coastal regions of India. Retreating monsoon rainfall in some places is as heavy as the summer monsoons. Interior parts of Dakkan remain dry because they lie in the rain shadow of the eastern Ghats. 
The retreating monsoons are generally dry, except on the coastal regions of Tamil Nadu, Odisha, and parts of Karnataka. Characteristic features of southwest monsoon. The distribution of rainfall is not uniform. The southwest monsoon causes rainfall in most of the country except in Tamil Nadu. The duration and the amount of rainfall varies from 2 to 4 months. Even the amount of rainfall varies from region to region. The second most important characteristic is the rainfall is erratic in nature. Sometimes the parts of the country may be facing the fire of floods due to heavy rains. It is mostly in the plains, while the other parts may be reeling under severe drought conditions due to scanty rainfall. It is mostly to be seen in the northwestern parts of Rajasthan and in the rain shadow areas of Deccan Plateau. The most important aspect of Indian rainfall is that it is largely controlled by orography. The effects caused due to the Himalayas and the Western Ghats on the amount and the distribution of rainfall and the inability of the Aravalis to cause rainfall in Rajasthan has been already discussed in my previous class. They do not cause any rainfall in Tamil Nadu and Punjab. In spite of all-round development, India still remains an agricultural country and a major part of its economy depends on the intensity of monsoons. All the hydroelectric projects, the perennial and non-perennial rivers of north and south, canals, wells, lakes and irrigation projects all over India are affected in case of failure of monsoons. Tropical Cyclones There are tropical depressions or low pressure systems originating in the Bay of Bengal caused by local variations of heat and moisture. They lead to tropical cyclones in November and December. Such cyclones generally originate in the neighborhood of the Andaman Islands between 12 degree north and 17 degree north and travel west or northwest over the Bay of Bengal. Whenever they occur, they cause great loss of life and property due to heavy rains on the eastern coastal regions of India. October Heat The retreat of monsoon is marked by clear skies and drop in night temperature. The land remains moist. The combination of high temperature and humidity gives rise to a sultry and oppressive weather. This is commonly known as October heat. Day temperature rises due to clear skies. It is a transition period between the hot rainy season and cold dry season. By the end of October or by the beginning of November, fine weather conditions prevail over the rest of the subcontinent. Rainfall in October October is a month of transition from the rainy season to the cool season. Because of this, October's weather is very pleasant with sunny days and cool evenings. The average temperature is approximately 25 degrees Celsius and the average monthly rainfall is only 21 millimeter. This cool and comfortable weather allows travelers 
to participate in outdoor activities such as hiking and sightseeing. The number of tourists visiting India in October starts to grow, but hotels and flights are still quite easy to book. Post monsoon season. Post monsoon season lasts from October to December and it is the time the monsoon usually retreats from India. Have a look at the map. It is showing the weather condition of the country during the post monsoon season. Rainfall is almost nil, but for the eastern coast, Kerala, and few parts of northeastern regions. It takes place due to the low pressure area over the northern parts of India due to temperature changes after the rains. By mid-December, the center of low pressure is not in the peninsula. The season of northeast monsoon the cold weather season commences at the end of November and continues till March. Clear skies, pleasant weather, low temperature and humidity, high range of temperature and slow northern winds are the chief characteristics of this season. Temperature conditions in the north in the winter season, January is usually the coldest month. The temperature decreases from south to north. The northern parts of the country have a mean temperature below 21 degrees Celsius and much lower in Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab and Haryana. The night temperature in the Gangetic Plains varies from 2.5 degrees Celsius to 17.5 degrees Celsius. The temperature falls below freezing point in the higher reaches of the Himalayas. Have a look at this clipping. The temperature falls below freezing point in the higher reaches of the Himalayas. Dras Valley in Kashmir near Kargil records a minimum temperature of minus 45 degrees Celsius in winter. It is the coldest place in India. It would have been much colder but for a great range of Himalayas shielding the subcontinent from the cold winter winds from Siberia. However, Many places in the northernmost parts of the Himalayas experience heavy snowfall which results in cold wave enveloping the surrounding areas of Punjab, Haryana and northern plains. Rainfall in January Winter rain leads to low day and night temperatures resulting in cold afternoons and chilly nights and hence are crucial for a chill trail especially in parts of North India. Western disturbance is a major cause for rains in plains of North India and snowfall in hilly states such as Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. From heavy to moderate rainfall followed by intermittent drizzling till afternoon are some of the characteristics of winter rain witnessed in January. Excessive cold in North India The excessive cold in North India during the cold season is due to the following reasons. In the month of February, the cold winds from the Caspian Sea and Turkmenistan bring cold waves over the northwestern parts of India. North India is away from the equator. Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan 
experience continental type of climates as they are located far away from the sea to experience its moderating influence. The snowfall in the nearby Himalayan regions creates a cold wave situation. Temperature conditions in the south. In peninsular India, the average temperature lies between 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius and it doesn't have any well-defined cold weather season. The coastal areas hardly experience any seasonal change in the distribution pattern of temperature due to the moderating influence of the sea and the proximity to the equator. For example, the mean maximum temperature for June at Tiruvananthapuram is 29.5 degrees Celsius and it is 31 degrees Celsius for January. Pressure condition and wind direction. The weather in this season is characterized by feeble high pressure conditions over the northwestern parts of the plain. Due to the apparent migration of the sun towards the south, shining directly over the Tropic of Capricorn, the Indian subcontinent receives oblique rays of the sun during winter. The northeast trade winds prevail over the country. These winds blow from land to sea and hence it is a dry season for most parts of the country. As these winds blow from northwest to southwest, they are called as the northeast monsoon. Temperate cyclones, western disturbances. A characteristic feature of the cold weather season is the inflow of depressions from the west and the northwest. These low pressure systems called the western disturbances originate in West Asia and the regions near the Mediterranean Sea. They travel eastwards across Iran and Pakistan and reach India during winter season. They bring the much needed winter rains over the plains and snowfall in the mountains. On an average, four or five such depressions affect India in each of the winter months. They are generally active between December and February. Though the amount of rainfall is small, it is of considerable importance for the cultivation of Ravi crops. Rainfall Most parts of India do not receive rainfall in the winter season. This is because the winter monsoons have little humidity and due to anticyclonic circulation on land, the possibility of rain from them decreases. However, there are some areas which do receive rainfall in the winter season. They are the central parts of India and northern parts of peninsula get occasional rainfall in winter. Some weak temperate cyclones from the Mediterranean Sea cause rainfall in Delhi, Haryana, Punjab and western Uttar Pradesh. Though the amount of this rainfall is meager, it is quite beneficial for the rabi crops. The northeastern part of India also gets rainfall during the winter months. Arunachal Pradesh and Assam get rains between 25 to 50 mm during winters. In the months of October and November, the northeast monsoon, while crossing over the Bay of Bengal, picks up moisture and brings torrential rainfall over Tamil Nadu and the southern tip of Andhra Pradesh. They cause heavy damage to standing crops and means of transport. The northeast monsoon brings rain 
to just five of the 36 meteorological divisions in the country. They are Tamil Nadu, which includes Puducherry, Kerala, Coastal Andhra Pradesh, Rayalaseema, and South Interior Karnataka. As such, this season contributes only 11% of the total annual rainfall of the country compared to about 75% in the summer monsoon season. The Northeast monsoon is generally considered more important to southern states than to the states of farther north. States like Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh receive close to 60 cm of rainfall during the season that add to soil moisture and aid wheat ravi crops. With a failure of any kind of rainfall activity in central and north India, the entire mainland has remained practically dry which could hurt the prospects of wheat cultivation. Characteristic features of the cold weather season Unlike the southwest monsoon, the onset of northeast monsoon is not so clearly defined. Sometimes it is difficult to draw a clear demarcation between the withdrawal of southwest monsoon and the onset of northeast monsoon. However, the direction of the winds over the large part of the country is influenced by the local high pressure conditions. A characteristic feature of the cold weather season is the inflow of western disturbances originating from Mediterranean Sea. Winter rainfall is caused by the depressions that are associated with the western disturbances moving out from the Mediterranean Sea. The special feature of this season is the variation in the winter temperatures from north to south of the Tropic of Cancer which go on decreasing as one moves towards north and south of the Tropic of Cancer which goes on increasing as one moves towards south with an average of 20 degree Celsius. The Ravi crops, wheat in northwest India and rice in Tamil Nadu depend on winter rainfall. Hence, it is of great economic importance affecting the production of these crops. They are very important to maintain the glaciers in Himalayas. The cold weather season in the country is generally marked by fine cool weather, low humidity and large variation in the range of temperature. This is the end of the class. I hope you have enjoyed and understood my class on seasons. As a continuation, I will be discussing about the annual distribution of rainfall in my next class. Stay connected. Please subscribe my channel and like and share my video. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again in my next class. Till then, take care and have a nice day.